happy Easter, everyone. It's so good to have you here. Um, I'm Mrs. Reed. Hopefully you guys are all uh, ready to go for and ready to celebrate Easter this week. Um, if you've been to church a couple times already, uh, you've probably been to either Holy Thursday or Good Friday or Holy Saturday Mass. And today we're going to go through the Easter Sunday um, Mass order. So super happy. It's an exciting day. It's a day of celebration, a day of rejoicing. We're rejoicing the uh, the rising of Jesus, the uh, the celebration of new life, all of those things. So we're super excited. It's a great day. It's a great feast day. Um, I'm not going to, as usual, I'm not going to read the um, first and second readings, but I am going to tell you a little bit about them. But before I do anything, let's say a prayer. That's what I'm going to do. Before we do anything, let's say a prayer. So, um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, risen Christ, bless us with open minds and heart that we will hear your word and carry the good news to others throughout Easter time, who live and reign with God the Father in the uni unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And I am going to try to light our candle. Ha, huh, look at that. Yeah. So, like I said, we're going to go over the first and second reading. I'm going to tell you what they are, but I'm going to ask you to maybe spend a little time with your mom and dad and read them and kind of see what you can hear in, them, hear in them. So the first one is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 37 through 43. It's interesting just to point out that our readings are coming from the New Testament this week, this Easter week. Um, and that's because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And um, the New Testament is all about the life of Jesus. So that first reading is a little a story of um, Peter and Cornelius. And uh, Peter the Apostle. And just about forgiveness of sins when um, you believe in Jesus. So... Take a look at that, and the second reading is Colossians chapters 3, verses 1 through 4, and that's an invitation to reorder our lives. That's a, a big word to say, an invitation to put Jesus first, to put Jesus as your priority. So take a look at that one as well with your parents, and um, or read it on your own. If you're older, read it to your little siblings. That'll be good. So let's get started with our gospel reading. As you can imagine, the gospel reading is going to be about the resurrection of Jesus and going into that tomb. So I want you to listen. I want you to listen about Mary, and I want you to listen about Jesus and what they found. And then we'll talk about it a little bit when we're done, okay? So I can say to you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Who is it from? According to... Sorry, I've turned my page. According to John. And you can say, glory to you, O Lord. We cross our hearts, our minds, our hearts, and we also sometimes cross our hands. So, alleluia, alleluia. So let's read the gospel reading. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and they got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he didn't go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciples who got there first believed they then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciples did not know that the scriptures said Jesus would rise to life. The Gospel of the Lord. We can all respond together. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a big jump ahead. If you heard the readings last week and even this weekend on Thursday and Friday, it's all about the death of Jesus, isn't it? It's, it's the passion of Christ, we call that. That's where Jesus dies on the cross. Um, it's sad. It's solemn. It's sort of a, a dark moment. 
Um, and this reading is is full of mystery and intrigue. And they're opening the, the tomb and they don't see Jesus. They wonder where he is. But we know what happened, don't we? We know that the scriptures were, were brought to life, that Jesus rose from the dead. Um, so we praise God in a special way today. And why do we do that? Easter is the greatest day the entire church year. This is the year. This is the best day we have in our whole year in church because because the story of the resurrection begins at sunrise. It's the beginning of a new day and the beginning of a new life. And Jesus was raised by God's love and given a life stronger than death. That's amazing. It's amazing. We rejoice because God's life is in us too. And even before Mass today, you could tell that something special was happening. If you are in Mass, look around. There are things that are different in the church today than there have been before. You'll notice the different flowers. You'll notice the, um, the water and the, the holy water is full again. The lights are different. The music will sound different. Take a, take a listen to that if you're, if you're at church today or if you're watching it on the live stream. On Friday, if you went to Good Friday Mass, again, like I said, we heard how Jesus died on the cross and was buried. And we know the story didn't end there, don't we? We know that. We know that when Christ rose, he was no longer kept in the dark tomb of those who had died. And he was raised from the dead to life by God's love. That's a great, great love that can raise, raise life from the dead. All four gospel writers tell us the story of how Jesus, people who loved Jesus, were so sad when he died and was buried and that they thought Jesus was gone from them forever but then on Sunday morning the woman who loved Jesus so much Mary Magdalene that's what I heard told you to listen for Mary Magdalene she went to go take spices to go in presents as you would to somebody who was buried and and anoint his body as you would and they they found that he was gone that he was that was empty where was the body where had someone taken it and even more, how did that heavy stone get removed? There's a lot to think about there. Uh, when the woman saw a young man at the tomb who told them Jesus was on the way to Galilee, Jesus was going back to where he began his work, this time to do it in a new and even greater way. So Jesus rose from the dead and wanted to get right back and spread the good news. So what did God share? When did God share that life with you, the life, that true love, that life? He, that was at your baptism. So I'd like you to think a little bit today about the people getting baptized today or this year and maybe say a special prayer for them. That's the beginning of new life, life for you and for us, isn't it? It's all at our baptism when we promise ourselves to God. God also promised that if we always do what God asks of us, what Jesus showed us while he, was, while he lived, that we will live with God forever, that we will get to go to heaven and have eternal life. Will everything that God asks us be easy? I don't think so. It won't always be easy, is it? Just like it wasn't always easy for Jesus. So we celebrate today because we, we remember that Christ rose from the dead. We celebrate today because we know, also know that God promises the same thing to us and to all those who die and are faithful followers of Jesus. And this is the reason why we rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Say that with me. Alleluia, alleluia. It's very exciting. Um, let's do our profession of faith. And I'm going to ask you, you can say this out loud at home, or you can say this in your head. It doesn't matter. But just say with me, I believe. Okay? So. I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord. I believe. Who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, then rose again on the third day. I believe. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father of the Almighty, from then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrections of the body, and life everlasting. We can say together, amen. So let's say our prayers of our faithful, and I'm going to ask you when we're done, if you think of some that you want to pray for on your own, you can go ahead and do that. Again, you can do that out loud, 
or you can do that in your head, however you want. Um, we praise and thank you, risen Lord, for, the, for by the power of your resurrection, we are filled with new life and hope. We offer our prayers to you now, and you will all respond together. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church to boldly and faithfully proclaim, proclaim the resurrection of Christ to those who do, do not yet believe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with power, leaders of our nations and world, that they share the earth's basic resources generously and fairly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who fear, especially who fear death, that they will trust and have hope in Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed in the Catholic Church, we rejoice with them and give thanks for God's life within them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So now is a good time to pray anything that you have in your heart. And I'll pray for you all, especially for all of the children of St. Catherine Drexel, that you enjoy the resurrection and you, you take peace in the right risen Lord. I pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you know that we hope and need. Renew us in our Easter faith and we celebrate your resurrection. Make us faithful to you as we share the good news to all who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. So thanks for checking in today, guys. I am looking forward to seeing you in person sometime soon, but I will just ask you to, I will pray for you this week. I'll ask you to pray for me as well, and I will just bless you on your Easter journey. We now start the season of Easter. I'm looking forward to that, and there's much to come. So have a good week. Bye.